Hi, it is Friday, the 4th of December, and I am continuing to read and wonder my way through John's Gospel. In fact, this is the last day I'm going to do it because, because we're finishing John's Gospel today. It will be John chapter 21, and I'm going to read the whole thing, uh, verses 1 through 25. Take a little longer, and I'll have to squint a little um, because there's a lot of words. Um, <clears throat> So you may recall that uh, yesterday uh, we kind of finished John's Gospel, and it pretty much says that's it. It it all but says the end, uh, and then there's another edition, right? It gives out the purpose of the book. It tells you there's lots of other stories not written down, but here's you know here it is, the end, and then comes another chapter. So we're left to wonder why the other chapter was added. Um, was it added by the same author? Maybe, maybe not. Um, probably not if you're looking at it uh, as a historian. Um, but it's in the the feel of it. Um, uh, so, so why is it is it added? And maybe I'll wonder about that after I've shared it with you. Um, so, here we go. John, John 21. Oh, I should mention. Come Monday, we will start on Luke's Gospel. If I've said anything else, I'm confused. We're going to start reading Luke's Gospel on, uh, on Monday. But now, John 21, verses 1 through 25. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. And Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. And he said to him, we'll go with you. And they went out and got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. And when they'd gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. And Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. And Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. And when he had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. <clears throat> A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. And he said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter felt hurt because he had said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. And when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. And this he said to him, and, and after this he said to him, Follow me. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. He was the one who had reclined next to Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is it that's going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? And Jesus said to him, If it is my will that he remain until I come, what is, it that, what is that to you? Follow me. And so the rumor spread in the community that this disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die, but if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple who has testified to these things and has written them, and we know that his testimony is true. But there are also many other things that Jesus did. 
If every one of them were written down, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that could be written. So there you go. The extra chapter. The director's cut of John's Gospel, as it were. Uh, a little more uh, than the folks who first read the Gospel would have gotten. So, much to wonder about. I, I started by saying I wonder why this was written, and, and for me, uh, I, it answers some questions that I, I can imagine. Uh, people asking about, about John. Um, is John important? Who is John? I mean, uh, John, in this text, um, this gospel is accredited to John, the disciple who Jesus loved, one of, one of the one of the twelve, even though historically that would be very, very hard to to make stick. But but this this gospel comes out of the community that that revered John and was built up around John, um, it would seem. And so it, it you know it, it's written in John's voice, even though it's written a couple of generations after John. Um, so I'm not sure. Maybe John got to be a very old man. Um, and we know that that that, that Peter uh, died, uh, and that Paul died. Uh, Peter was crucified, as is uh, noted here. Um, Paul died, um, was executed by by the state as a Roman citizen. Um, so maybe people wondered, well, if they're gone, why is John still alive? And and here's the answer. Although it's not absolutely clear. If it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? Um, when I read that in 2020, instead of trying to imagine um, what it might mean historically, uh, what it says to me right now is, yeah, these are little details. Does it? Does that really matter to you? Do you, do you need to put all those things in place? This is a call to me, the control freak, uh, to let it go. <laughs> uh, worry about, about, about me and, and not worry about others. Um, there also is in this, you'll, you'll, you'll recognize uh, the familiar um, scene. Um, so Jesus um, is, is not with them. Um, he has appeared to them, but, but it doesn't seem clear like in Acts that, that there's something for them specifically to do right now. So they go fishing, which makes sense. They were fishermen. I don't know about you, but in times of, of confusion, times of uh, shock, um, I, I do what I know how to do. And so that seems to be the thing they've done here. They, they've gone back to do what they know how to do. They're, they're, they've gone fishing. Um, here it's referred to as the Sea of Tiberias. That, that, is, that, is, the, uh, that, is, um, that is Galilee. Um, it's just that uh, Caesar Tiberius felt that he should name it after himself. Uh, so it's the same body of water that you may remember. Um, Peter and James and John were fishing on it. And Jesus walked along the shore, saw them fishing, told them to throw their nets out on the other side. Um, they'd caught nothing until they followed Jesus' instructions. Then they caught a whole bunch uh, of fish, came ashore, and Jesus basically enlisted them, um, called them, invited them to follow him. Well, we're just doing that again, aren't we? Uh, there we are, the same, the same body of water, the same beach, the same voice from offshore, the same we didn't catch anything, suddenly we do. Um, so it, it's kind of a, um, a restatement of the theme, um, a coda, as it were, if, you're, if you uh, are a composer um, of music. Um, we just bring the themes back again, and we offer Peter a little bit of redemption. Uh, I don't know about you, but as a kid, you know, I would read about Jesus denying, uh, I mean, Peter denying Jesus three times. That always bothered me. I um, mean, man, Peter, why didn't you step up for Jesus? And, and if it bothered me as a kid, for all I know, it was bothering people as well as, as the church was growing. And, uh, and so, so this extra chapter gives Peter redemption. Um, Peter denies Jesus three times, as you know, um, on on uh, on the day that we would call Good Friday, um, and and here he three times states that he loves Jesus. So so redemption is there. Twenty twenty. I love a story that offers me redemption. That offers me a chance to make up for where I have lacked, where I have failed, where I have disappointed myself, or 
or God. Um, so there's another opportunity. I, I love that message. It's, it's quite beautiful. Uh, but notice what the redemption is. It's not just, I love you, feed my sheep. So whatever you said, whatever you did, feed my sheep. I love you. Do you love me? Then feed my sheep. Um, very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, he goes on to tell him that how he's going to die. But, but the emphasis here is not on that. The emphasis is on feed my sheep. If you're going to follow me, if you love me, then take care of my people. Feed my sheep. What does that mean? I wonder, is that feeding the hungry? Uh, is that... Uh, engaging and nurturing people of faith so that they may be fed, fed by your words, but also fed by the words of others, um, that we all together feed each other. Um, who are my sheep? My sheep are the people who follow Jesus' voice, right? In John, he's very clear about that. The sheep are the ones who hear the shepherd's voice and follow. So we've often interpreted that as feed my sheep, meaning go and feed the hungry, but I don't know that that's necessarily true. I, I do think we should feed the hungry. But I think also that this might be an invitation to engage in faith. Don't just assume you've got it figured out. Don't just assume that by saying, I love you, Jesus, three times in a row, that you're now a Christian. Feed my sheep. Engage with others. Talk and grow in faith. Growing in faith is going to make you, by, out of necessity, I think, feed those who are hungry and clothe the naked and visit the prisoner and, and all of those things. But I think feed my sheep has to do with, with, with engaging with, with people of faith, listening to each other, challenging each other, growing with each other. Um, but that's, that's me. That's not the way this would be preached generally. Um, the other thing that I wonder about is just the, the, the beauty of the scene. Doesn't it feel like like a dream? You know, as if as if Peter's having a dream and he's back out in the water. He remembers that. You ever have those dreams when you're back in high school? Um, and uh, do you ever have those dreams when you're back in high school and you're getting up to give an English presentation and you're naked in front of the class? You notice that Peter's naked in the boat. Uh, now, I know I'm reaching a little there because, in fact, that is how you fished. You, you did fish naked. You didn't want to get your clothes wet, um, uh, which is weird that you then put them on to swim ashore. But, you know, modesty is what it is. Um, no, it's not that you wanted to get your clothes wet. You didn't want to get torn. Um, so, so you fished naked. It was just the way you did it. Uh, but it just it, it put in my mind, oh, my gosh, Peter's having one of those dreams where he's back where he used to be. And, oh, my God, he's vulnerable. He's naked. Uh, I know that dream, but the more I listen to it, the more I read it, the more I think about it, the more this feels like a dream. It's early morning. You can sort of see the mist on the water. There's a voice offshore. We don't, we can't, we don't even know who it is. We, we, we suspect it maybe, but it's just a voice. And that feels so dreamlike. And then, and then Peter plunges into the water and chases after that voice. And then when the others get to shore, they don't ask who it is because they know, but they don't know. They're not sure. It just feels so much like a dream to me. So in 2020, is this uh, an invitation for me to take dreams seriously? If not my own, then the dreams of others. Uh, is this an invitation by John for me to, to take visions seriously? If not my own, then those of others. Um, here in the gospel to me, is this mystical dream vision story that takes up bits of the story I already know, familiar scenes, and then offers me something else, which is redemption for Peter and an invitation to feed my sheep, to, to continue to engage in my faith and to keep growing. I think I'm going to leave it right there. Because I think that's a fabulous way to end the gospel. Um, to recognize that there is uh, redemption. There is uh, always another day and a chance to, to make up for, for the mistakes of yesterday. And I love that the gospel ends by reminding me to feed the sheep. To, to engage and to keep growing in faith. So friends... 
What a way to end John's gospel. And thank you for being with me on this journey through the gospel. I, I hope when we begin on Monday with Luke's gospel that it is as edifying. Um, there were times that I just was really powerfully moved um, just by speaking out loud to you, knowing there was someone listening to me and hearing me say things. And, oh, wow, I didn't know that until I said it. Uh, and there were other times that I blathered on, you know, kind of like now. And so I thank you for your patience when I was blathering. But I thank you for continuing to, to listen and uh, invite me to keep doing this because, um, well, if I'm feeding you, I am also being fed. So it's kind of like John suggests. <sighs> With that, let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the journey of John's gospel. We thank you that what began in poetry ends in a dream, and yet everything from beginning to end feels so real, so current, so important. God, thank you for the opportunity to wonder, and thank you for your word, your love, your voice that we hear as we wonder together. May we continue to feed and be fed. May we continue to grow in faith. We pray through the Holy Spirit and in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, friends, thank you so very much for doing this with me. And uh, I hope you join me for Luke. Um, I guess we'll find out on Monday. God bless you. Please know that you are not alone. And whether you know it or not, you are feeding the sheep. Every time you dare to wonder, to talk about faith, to love, you're feeding the sheep. See you soon.